go f***ing inside and you. I'm over this. And she says, ah, you want to make me a Welcome to Titarangi on Auckland's west coast. Titarangi, known to locals as Titters, is the sort of suburb where casual animal husbandry has a place in public. And the locals just love it. Just down the road from the village, we caught up with Pierre, who co-owns this charming three-bedroom bungalow and the attached sleep-out behind with his partner Duncan. Titirangi has this kind of hippie feeling and there's all the west side thing happening, but it's actually a really amazing neighbourhood to be in. Pierre and Duncan are now domiciled in France. Their neighbours in Paris are très bien, but there's a problem with their neighbour in Titirangi. And that means Pierre has had to come halfway around the world to deal with it. So the first problem we heard about was, um, hang on, Pierre, Duncan, the guy's gone out to his diggers and is actually digging all the trees on, on your driveway. So that's when we started ha having alarm bells going. The neighbour in question, Dan, is renovating Unit 2, which is adjacent to Pierre and Duncan's sleep out but Dan's elaborate works have also extended to areas behind the block of units and in front, on the common areas. This cross lease land and you need to have basically the approval of all the other owners. Pierre and Duncan say the neighbour's removal of trees in front of their sleep out has impacted on the property's privacy. And what's more, the holes left by the absent trees are a risk to their tenants' kiddies playing on the right of way. So there's like this huge gap. Like I'm, I'm not going to go in there because I don't have the gum boots. But basically, a kid could easily fall into that. And I don't know if you see how deep it is, but it's the same on um, on the other side of the driveway. That's just unsafe to me, for cars, for kids, for anything. Alarmed at the holes dug on the driveway, Pierre and Duncan started some digging of their own, looking into property records. He was claiming everywhere, it's my house, I can do whatever I want. But after doing a bit of digging, we found out when we went to the council, he wasn't actually on the title. He wasn't like the rightful owner of the property. So that's when we thought he was pushing it a bit too far. Unlovely holes on the driveway are one thing, but Pierre was about to discover just how far Dan the neighbour had pushed. Then we found out that he's actually physically assaulted our tenant. The tenant had been pushed to the fence and yelled at, and those words were, why don't you sorry, F go inside you and basically she ended up on the ground, and that's when she called the police. Suddenly, back in Paris, alarm bells were ringing louder than Notre Dame on a Sunday. So that's huge alarm bells for us. I must say it's a kind of attitude that I wasn't expecting from a New Zealander. Isn't New Zealand supposed to be like a safe haven and everyone's chilled and peaceful and relaxed and everyone's supposed to live together and happily ever after or whatsoever? Pierre took us outside to the scene of this most un titarangi like tantrum. He gave us a blow-by-blow -blow account which he's pieced together in his mind, even though he wasn't there. So imagine a, a woman here with a kid next door and a guy that's taller than me, like maybe six foot two or six foot three, that goes like rah at her, rah, and telling you to go f***ing inside and die, you That's an assault to me. It's not what this country is all about, you know? A human being doing that to another human being. That's just, that's just not on. While we were filming on the driveway, another human being arrived. G'day. Hi. You all right, mate? How are you? It was Phil, another of the neighbours on the right of way. So Pierre took the opportunity to find out if he knew what happened that day between Dan and Pierre's tenant. Did, were you there when it happened, or? Oh, yeah, she called me a silly old pit. A what? Silly old tit. It's An it's... ugly guy. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I ignored it because I, I, when I came back from overseas, yeah, uh, I went to a stress class. Yeah, and names don't hurt me. Yeah, but she's been angry ever since she's moved in. So did you see what happened around the? Yeah, well, I called Dan a, a name, oh. and he didn't like. He said, "Look, just go inside, will you?" I've had enough. Of it. She said, "I'm going to call the cops," and she ran inside. 
Yeah. This was all news to Pierre. OK, thanks, Phil. Okay, that's all right, no worries. See you later, mate. Yeah. Despite travelling all the way from Paris, enduring 24 hours in economy class to deal with this in person, Pierre has not come face to face with Dan, the neighbour. I haven't actually physically met him or talked to him, but I've just spoken with our tenant and the, the whole neighbourhood around our property. Is that It's just a bully that's been bullying his way around. But one man who obviously has met Dan, the neighbour, is Phil from down the drive. He not only witnessed the alleged assault on Pierre's tenant, he's also been watching the renovations taking place next door. Claudia. Claudia. Former mortician Phil believes Pierre and Duncan's tenant is the root of the rifts between Pierre and Dan. The lady in the front caused a lot of stress on Dan and Pierre and his partner. She said some funny words. Uh, sash bib or whatever. Dan didn't say anything. I, I said, oh, hello, how are you? And she went, boom, popped, just like a volcano. And it all <laughs> came out. He did touch her. You know, no, he didn't lay a finger on her. He, he, all he did is went like that. Phil is convinced the removal of the trees on the side of the driveway has added significantly to the value of the property. Dan's improved the property by about $1,000. He's cut out the privets and willows going up the driveway because they're virtually on the driveway. As soon as Dad gets everything done, uh, like I said, it's going to be a thousand dollars profit on the whole whole section. Phil doesn't speak French, but he has got a message for Pierre in a language of his own. My message to Pierre would be, Parky, tell me not to hide behind his head and look look at the picture. At a building site in West Auckland, we met Pierre's neighbour Dan, whose partner owns the unit next to Pierre's. He was happy to down tools for a chat, but didn't want to show his face. He agreed instead to wear a cricket hat, which is not normally his style. Dan might not want to show his face on TV, but he'd be more than happy to show it to Pierre and sort this whole mess out if only Pierre would front up. I've never met him. He's never done the courtesy of giving me a call or meeting with me, um, the instructions that I'm under now is that I'm not to ring him, that I'm to deal only with his lawyer. And he's got, you guys, TV3? No? The other one. TV2 and the council fighting his wars for him and he just scurries off back to France. I'm not very impressed. But if Pierre and Dan have never met, how did this whole brouhaha ever kick off? And where did all the bad blood come from? This is all based on their tenant. We had a, a, a serious run-in with her um, where she called me a f that is just appalling. I've never met anyone as abusive as her. He admits reacting aggressively and talked us through the build-up. Into the driveway um, walks Phil and his good wife, who are the uh, tenants right down the very end. And I says, hi, Phil, at which time their tenant. She jumps out, hands on hips, you talking to me for your, your effing I went, woo. I'm saying hello to Phil. And she turns and looks at Phil and his wife, and she says to me, and I quote, are you f what do you want to talk to that ugly for? And I says, I beg your pardon? And she says, you heard me, you I said to her, I think you should just off. Go inside and just I'm over this. And she says, ah, you want to make me a Dan denies assaulting Pierre and Duncan's tenant. Didn't lay a finger on her. I couldn't believe it. That was just outrageous. For his part, Pierre finds it hard to believe his tenant would be so politically and grammatically incorrect. I, I couldn't even conceive anybody saying in the same sentence. It's just twice the same word. It's just not a good figure of speech. What Pierre's talking about is a titirangi tautology. That's when you say the same thing twice in one sentence more than once. But there are a few things around this incident that have been said more than once, such as this. <coughs> so did Dan really <coughs> at the woman in question? I went straight up to her face and I went, whoa! <laughs> and she's ah, assault, assault. So we had the police arrive at my residence that night. They say that I had 
punched her in the face and dropped her to the deck. The police chose not to lay any charges over the incident. But Pierre has a charge to put. He charges Dan with attempting to play the gay card. You must have found out that Duncan and I were a gay couple as well, so you might have tried to push the, the gay community flag and say, look, she's calling me up. You guys are gay, so you should be on my side, not on hers. So it just doesn't make any sense to me. Something that doesn't make sense to Dan is the trespass order Pierre had slapped on him. At first, I got angry, as anyone would. I don't like having a trespass notice on my own property slapped on me. I mean, hello. Pierre says the trespass notice was also designed to stop Dan from running roughshod over his property as part of his extensive renovations. Since you have the trespass notice now, there's boundaries where well, basically, if you go behind that, it's a legal matter. Pierre says Dan has carried out major works without council consents, let alone neighbour consultation. And now I fly all the way over from Paris and I come here, I, I come down the driveway and I have a look and I've got this in front of me. Even if the guy knows what he's doing, I guess you'd need consent for things like that. Pierre complained to the Auckland Council, but that turned out to be an own goal, according to Dan. Council now, when they came down to have a look at Unit 2, they've also seen all the illegal works that he's done, and that now needs to be returned to his designated use, carport, garage. They spent maybe 55000 they now have to take out the kitchen and get all the other works to comply, and they don't have the money to do that. It's a huge backfire and a huge loss. That huge backfire is currently burning a hole in Pierre and Duncan's pocket because their non-compliant sleep-out remains untenanted. We're feeling trapped. Well, now we can't rent out the sleep-out. Our main tenant is not willing to go to the end of the lease. We even fear that we might end up losing the whole house. Now, if Pierre had just come and dialogued us or texted us or emailed us, and address these issues, it could have all been sorted out right from day one. But he's chosen to take the word of the tenant. Dan believes both couples can still move on agreeably if Pierre and Duncan just stop listening to their tenant and start talking to him. We're still quite happy to talk to Pierre. This is just a shame that it's been soured by the real nasty witch. One neighbour won't show his face, the other won't face up at all. But tonight, that's set to change as we bring both parties together in an attempt to nut this out. It's our first ever international mediation, so we've drafted in a man whose middle name is Worldly. My name's Chapman, Wallace Chapman. From student to national radio via the nation's most powerful people, Wallace Chapman is not afraid to ask the pertinent questions. Honey, who would you turn gay for? <laughs> He's agreed to officiate at the historic Playhouse Theatre tonight. The big deal is that these guys have never, ever talked to each other before. The first step is to communicate. And tonight, hopefully, is the first time they'll not only talk to each other, but get a resolution out of this really messy, messy property situation. Thanks to modern technology, we're bringing gay Paris to a not-so-gay Glen Eden via Skype. Let's hope the Wi-Fi is good. How are you doing? Hey, Wallace. Good. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Have too. a seat. Thanks. All right, everybody, welcome. Say hello. Dan, say bonjour to Pierre and Duncan. Bonjour, Pierre. Bonjour, Duncan. <laughs> this is the first time that you guys have actually not only talked to each other, but met each other. Mm. OK, so what's the deal? Your tenant has got an issue, quite a big issue, with Dan, right? All we understand is that there was some kind of altercation. Dan, was there? Tell me about this altercation. Yes, yes, I can tell you. Ex I was there. All right, what right. happened? Did you shout at her? Yes. I what did you say? I said, I think you should off inside and drop, is what I said. Prior to you that... You should off inside and, and drop... And that's what now, I said. Dan. That was done in a response to a situation. We were within maybe... 12 feet of Pierre and uh, Duncan's property, and their tenant, unbeknown to me, was hiding behind that corner, listening to everything that I was saying to my boy. Their tenant jumps out, puts her hands on her hips, says, you talking to me, you f***ing She didn't say Absolutely. that. Absolutely. 
I have just taken right, it then. and taken it and taken it and taken it. Dan's saying your tenant is horribly phobic to him. What, what's your response to that? Once again, you know, what, what she said to him and what he heard are totally different things. And, you know, all we can say is that hearsay... She accosts yeah. and abuses <laughs> everyone Judy. on site. I've spoken to you one time and I get the impression that you can come across as being confronting. Right. Well, That's a good point, Dan. I think the concern for us there was uh, our tenant was threatening to, uh, well, basically saying she wants out of the lease. That's why I had to fly all the way over. You were here in New Zealand. At no time did you ever ring me or call me or make any effort to get in touch with me. What was going on there? Why would I go and see a guy that was bullying his way around? And As you can understand now, I never bullied anybody. Why would I want to go into a conflict with you? I know, I know oh, that you can be a bit a confrontational. Yeah. I have never been confrontational. That was the first and only time, and hopefully the last time, that, I've, that we will have words. Yes, she's a Yes, she's a but if she wants to come and mouth off at me, that's fine. Dan is willing to steer clear of Duncan and Pierre's tenant. But what about Dan's aggression towards the inanimate objects getting in his way? There's been no issues about trees or bamboo or privet since we've owned the place. You come along, all of a sudden the bamboo's ripped out, the privet's ripped out, a big tree's gone. We have done a massive job of tidying it all up and we will replant it. We don't have any anything against the whole idea. What we weren't happy about is the way it got actioned. Okay. It's easy to forget this whole thing began with confusion over renovations Dan carried out in and around the common areas. With both couples wanting to renovate, Dan thinks he has the solution on a piece of A4. If I hold it there, can you see that? Is have it I got going it going the wrong way? Like oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> the drawing I've drawn is just a sketch, but, and the lines are bent, but you can see the, the Commons driveway running down. It's a plan to end this cross-lease nightmare by converting some of the common area to exclusive use. So we thought if you guys wanted to have exclusive use from the entire front portion of this area, and then everyone else gets the exclusive use of that stretch behind their units up the top of the plage. Dan is proposing making the land behind each unit private so owners can do what they will without the need for endless consultation. They get exclusive use rights, each of the other units get it, and we can negotiate what shape and what size Fantastic. later on down the line. All right, can we all agree on that? Yeah, I think it's good. I think it's a great uh, resolution. Can we agree that we've reached somewhat of a resolution and somewhat of a turning point tonight, guys? Amen. Fantastic, <laughs> amen. Usually, we do shake hands, but so all together, I want you to put your hands on the computer. High five. Awesome, guys. High, high fives. Five. All right, see ya. And there it is. All it took was a small amount of privatisation. John Key would approve. I'm feeling very relieved and very happy with the outcome. It's really good. Hopefully we'll be able to keep the communication going this time. I think that now we're on talking terms and um, that it's going towards a great resolution that yeah. everyone's going to be benefiting from, basically. Yeah. You see them in faces, you know? Bye-bye. Open. Openness, communication. And that's all it takes. Are you happy with all that? Yeah.